there are a number of things we can do to promote positive connections with birth family. Uh, first of all, we want to be talking to the child about adoption early and often. We want the child to hear positive language and accurate language about who members of the extended family, birth family, are so that the child is empowered to use the accurate and positive language and has a knowledge and understanding of how they join the family and who the other members of their family are. Um, it can also be beneficial for extended family and others when they hear that language being used. We started out with a just emailing um, his birth mom. That turned into more visits. And over the years, we've really gotten to know not just her, but her whole family. So we feel like they're just our extended family. Um, we have probably about four visits with them per year. It's just what it naturally ends up being. And we also have a relationship with his biological um, birth, his birth father's mother, so his biological grandmother on the birth father side. We had in the beginning our contact agreement was just emailing once a week with uh, visits around his birthday. So it wasn't very much contact, but that was just kind of a baseline. And we knew we wanted more anyway. Um, so we're very happy with the way everything has turned out that she is wanting to, you know, know us and know him. And it's it's been just far better than we anticipated. When I discuss our open adoption relationship with friends and and family and, and coworkers, uh, I try to be treat, treat it like any sort of unique or super special relationship. It's almost just a it's another family member. The same way people would talk about going to visit an aunt or cousins. It's just uh, if someone at my office asked, "What'd you do this weekend?" I said, "Oh, we were uh, over at uh, Joe's uh, biological family's uh, house for a party, a birthday, or uh, or for Easter, or for Christmas, and and we'll just talk about." It, like just another normal family event because that's to us really what it is. It's just an extended family. I try to just describe his birth family as they're our extended family. And there are still some people in my family who don't like quite get it, but they they have seen over time. And it's that's the thing. It's you don't they don't start out completely understanding from the get-go. They have to see it in action. They see the open adoption in action. Over the years, they see us being a family, and then they start to realize, like, oh, it just is extended family. In situations where there's no information known about the birth family, um, we could still pursue more information. Uh, for example, in inter-country adoption, um, many children are, are either abandoned or placed in a, in a safe um, area where they can be found by others. In those situations, um, no information would be known, but we could seek additional information either through social media, through organizations that, that um, promote search and reunion, or through genetic testing um, services to make connections to members of one's birth family. So um, even when we think there's no ability to pursue more information, often with a little digging, there's ways to find more information and to make more connections and to pursue those relationships um, over a period of time. In this particular day and age, with Facebook, with social media, with applications like Ancestry.com and 23andMe, it's so easy for children to find birth family members or even for birth family members to find their children that there is no such thing as a closed adoption anymore. It's so much better for kids to do this kind of exploration, to do this journey with the support of people who know them and love them and care about them. There are a number of different ways to maintain connections with birth family after adoption. Uh, Always the, the driving principle is what's in the child's best interest. Uh, but there is no prescription or answer for what that relationship should look like. It's going to change over time, and it's going to be as unique as there are different family situations. No two families' situations will look the same. So instead of looking for a formula for what should be done, 
you want to ask yourself, you know, what is what does it look like when I seek to maintain relationships with other people in my family who are important to me? H- how do I pursue relationships with people that I've known and want to maintain an ongoing friendship or relationship with? It can look like celebrating holidays together, um, going on outings together, celebrating birthdays together, um, sharing letters, um, sharing updates on social media, sharing pictures. Uh, all, all sorts of different options are available to families to really promote and, and, and maintain relationships over a period of time. When that adopted individual becomes an adult, he or she is going to determine um, what that relationship looks like and will be setting the terms of how they're maintaining communication over time. You need to be the person that can help understand and support and follow those footsteps. I can tell you that for our family, we have four adopted children, and all four of them have a different kind of connection with and a different sort of relationship to their birth family members. And it's important for me and for my husband as parents to honor and respect what their wishes are, regardless of what we think would be best. So this whole process has just really softened our hearts and it it keeps you so humble. Um, and I just, I can't imagine not having an open adoption. It's, you know, our son won't have these questions when he's growing up. And of course you do it age appropriately. You know, now he knows I came from this lady's tummy and that's that's his understanding as of now at age three and he will grow to know more about his story. And it's just so important that it's not a secret because if it's a secret, then it's shameful and it's not anything he should be ashamed of or his birth mom should be ashamed of. So we will keep his adoption as part of his, you know, continual conversation. It's um, just part of part of our lives and he will get to know her he won't have these questions, you know, he won't feel like he's missing a piece of who he is. Some of these closed adoptions a long time ago, these adoptees just feel like they have a part of them that they don't know that's missing because they never got to meet their biological parents. So we're just so fortunate that we get to have this relationship. And he, if he has questions, even like, where do my blue eyes come from? Or Am I funny like my birth mom? And he'll get to not only have us tell, but he'll get to see her himself and he'll get to experience that. And it's just, we just can't imagine any other way.